G'day guys, Dan here. This video is part one of a two-part series in how to build the ultimate dog crate for a Land Rover Discovery 5. In this video, we're going to go through how we actually built the template to test fit and make sure that this crate will perfectly fit inside this Discovery 5. Check it out. We had a customer come to us a little while ago asking for a custom dog crate. Now we don't usually do custom orders all too often, but this one was really, really down our alley. So we thought we'd, um, we would take it on board, especially with all the different customizations that was required, we thought it'd be a really, really cool little project to do. Some of the items or details that was actually required in this dog cage was one, it had to suit uh, two dogs, mainly German Shepherds or that larger breed. Uh, two, it had to have an emergency hatch at the back. And three, it had to fit inside a vehicle. Uh, and this one being a uh, Land Rover Discovery 5. What we're gonna show you today or in this video is the behind the scenes of what's actually required to make something custom and to make something fit precisely and perfectly to a vehicle. We need to go through, and then we can do these notches. That's the front. So it's gonna actually have a notch here. And it's gonna come up like that and across. All throughout this video, in this part one of the video, you will see that there'll be a fair bit of cutting, notching, marking out, and assembling. All this was done, uh, this drawing was done via a 3D, um, 3D modeling package. And so I've just printed out the drawings out. I'm literally just cutting all of these flat patterns to suit. Now we don't usually work with timber all that much, being a sheet metal fabrication business, timber's a little bit foreign. <laughs> Uh, however, same things apply when it comes to safety, so on and so forth. So the biggest thing about custom jobs is accuracy and quality. So making sure that what we're doing now, which is the template, making sure that every piece is cut precisely and is cut perfectly so it goes together, not only efficiently, but accurately therefore it gives us the best picture of the exact size so that when we go and fit this into the test vehicle we know that whatever we've drawn in the free modeling software is exactly how we've made it and is exactly how it's fitting into the test vehicle Quality is the biggest thing. Having everything done to within within half or one millimeter means that when everything goes together, your tolerance is is extremely tight. If you, let's say, cut everything to one or two millimeters, if each part is two millimeters bigger and it goes together and there's four or five different parts, you may find that the end product of this template might be 10 millimeters larger. Now we're going to do is uh, knock out all the angles of them, and we can put it together. So you cut that off. Like 
time. Now, because of what this is and we need to them, this is one of those few times where you can mark once and cut twice. So our tolerance, or my tolerance, I'm working to is less than half a mil. That way, when we're putting the two fronts and then the side together, we've only really got half to one mil variance. Which means when it fits into the vehicle, it's just going to be proper, prime, it's just going to be accurate, and it's going to fit exactly how it's supposed to. These little notches, that's the key. That's where the detail comes in. Without these little notches, you'll find that it might uh, foul on certain uh, fixings or fixtures inside the vehicle. So these, these little bits are actual key. What we're using here is just 18 mil uh, chipboard. It's just what I had laying around in the workshop. It's not overly expensive. As you can see, I'm actually marking the scrap just to easily identify what's scrap, what's good. That way, when you're cutting, you actually cut on the right side of the line. Uh, the circular saw blade is about three millimeters thick, so if you cut on the wrong side, Right there, you could be three three millimeters out straight off straight off the bat. So, talking more about the fixtures of inside the vehicle, we had to design uh, this double dog cage around mounting points inside the vehicle, uh, making sure that there was actually a flat platform inside the back of the vehicle so that this dog cage would sit flush and level. We had to make sure that there was no fixtures inside the vehicle that would foul. So there are a lot of trims inside the vehicle that have radius bottoms or radius tops or radius sides, which can make it a little bit hard to butt, butt square or flat joints directly up to. So making sure that everything is notched out correctly, faceted correctly, therefore it fits in and there is no fail. It doesn't foul on anything at all. And the battery's dead actually. Don't you hate it when tools just go flat just when you're going through and cutting? All right. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll just go through, piece it together, screwing it so they won't take long because all we technically have to do now is have that as it is. Screw, I'll screw the sides into it, uh, put the back on, which will follow that angle, which makes it really easy, and put the lip up. I'm gonna actually save a couple of leaves. Here I'm just going through my head, making yeah, sure that I've cut everything properly and cut oh, every part required to put there. this dog just cage together, this, this template uh, dog cage together. Where the back panel and the top panel come up like that, it's gonna have some gusset panels that come down so we can screw it together to keep that angle consistent. Safety first. Always safety, especially with these little nail guns or brad guns. They can be pretty crazy. When it comes to making these type of templates, you can never have enough hands to hold all these different parts together. Um, anyone that's ever made cabinetry, um, even builders, carpenters, you can never have enough hands to hold all the different bits and pieces together to get everything lined up perfectly. And this is where your clamps just come in, come into play and they're so handy to have. So you can see on this template, we're fitting the two sides. Now I'm just gonna start off uh, nailing these together and then eventually I will go through and screw this uh, together for strength. This is merely just to line up the, the nails that are merely here or are merely being used just to line everything up and almost 
for lack of a better word, tack it together so that when I can go through later on, I can screw it together easily without parts moving. What we end up doing is putting a couple of gussets around here, they're about just to strengthen everything up and make it a little bit more rigid. your fingies. What we're going to do is actually make these little standoffs so when the front piece comes on we'll just slide through that side and tie it together and then push it through just get a bit more strength. Now these bits of timber here are merely just to strengthen up uh, when we put the back panel on. Push them a bit too high on that one and therefore push the little nails out. That's one bad thing about nails. They're not good if you actually push on the other side. It'll just come straight out. Square. So what I'm doing here is getting these standoffs as vertical as possible so I can put the back vertical panel on. I'll then screw it or clamp it in place and get it ready so we can attach the top piece. That's that's one up there, and that's going to be the center there. So then, what we can do is just to help us out a little bit, is then go through and just drill. Like that. So now, then we know that's going to work. This one here, we know it's going to be right here, but just lift that up a touch, mark the center, and then go through and do the exact same thing. There's two ways we can do this. We can cut a couple more bits of ply, which would be the smart way of doing things. And then go through and just hang them down 18 mil, because that's the thing, so this ply, 18 mil down here, 18 mil down here, clamp them on, and that way the whole thing will just sit level. Then if everything measures up right, all we have to do is loosen these clamps off and just tilt that forward or back to make everything fit together in my home free. So let's do that now. Ain't that right? Never enough clamps. Alright. So guys, as I was saying before, it all just comes down to these little bits and pieces, just the detail and everything. Taking your time, taking the extra 30 seconds to a minute, just lining everything up perfectly. That way, the overall of this dog box come out exactly to how we have designed it. So, we're gonna do that. There you have it, look at that. Just fits perfectly. 
the whole thing together. And now, you just fix it off. We'll put these in, nails in first, in their strike. And then we're gonna come up and screw them, just for this space. See that there, just a tad low. You notice know, so I was wiggling that, that drill around just then. That's, you can actually walk the drill bit into where you have marked the hole. So if you're drilling and sometimes the, the drill bit will jump off where you're a little bit off center of the hole, you can actually walk that drill bit back into center of exactly where the hole needs to be. It's a bit of a trick. Fix the whole thing into position. Alright, so we can take these clamps off and now we have the basic structure. Basic structure of our dock cage. Now we can go through, put this into our test vehicle, see how it holds up, see if it fits. If it does fit, perfect. If it doesn't, we modify it. And that was a critical point right there, where if it doesn't fit, being made out of timber, it's fairly easy to modify, to plane down, to actually get it to suit. Whereas if we made this directly out of uh, aluminium or even stainless, to try and cut that down and reattach it to itself is a time consuming, cumbersome and expensive ordeal. So we're just putting in some bottom bracing now, just to give it a little bit more strength. I always recommend doing this with two people. Is exactly what I just <laughs> what was just said. It would suck for it to roll off after all that work, putting it together, roll off and break. That would suck. All right, now the basic structure is now complete and made. Now we are ready to go and test fit this in the test vehicle, which will be coming up in part two. G'day guys, thanks for watching part one of this little mini series we have here. Make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications of a part two coming out next week.